of Open Doors, which is also our last Sunday for the month of January. Hallelujah. Our prophetic declaration for the month that we'll be running with since the beginning of the month is prayer and fasting empowers fulfillment of prophecy. And our Sunday teachings is on understanding the blessedness of prayer and fasting. Understanding the blessedness of prayer and fasting. The blessing you draw from anything is a function of how much you understand of that thing. It is your depth of understanding of anything that determines the quality of blessing and quantity of blessings that you take from that thing. In Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15, the Bible says, good understanding, give it favor. The way of the transgressor is hard. Good understanding. Good understanding. All through this month, we have engaged in 21 days of prayer and fasting. And the desire of God is that you may enjoy the fullness of the blessing that fasting and prayer carries. In our previous teachings, we have tried to enumerate the comprehensive package of what fasting carries. And testimonies are already rolling in. So fasting is not just a religious exercise. No. It is your access, your covenant access to power to deliver all that Jesus paid with his blood for. And in Isaiah chapter 58, reading from verse 6 downwards, we see the comprehensive package of what blessings that fasting carries. We are looking at some of them again uh, before we usher ourselves to the open doors that God has for us for this month, for this Sunday. And one of the blessings of fasting is that God takes over your battles. God takes over our battles. Life is not from fear, it is warfare. A great and effectual door is open, but there are adversaries. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Against the wickedness of this world. Wicked forces. There are people that have vowed that they won't see any good thing concerning you over their dead body. And just like they have said it, since they don't want to see it, they will go to the grave as they desire. There are people that day and night they are just angry when they see anything good around you. You wake up, take your bath, wear your normal dress. It's not a new one. No. But the fact that it fits you well and you are passing, they are angry. And you didn't borrow money from them to buy that dress. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people that anytime they hear any testimony shared, they are may not even members of the church, but they just hear. Now, do you know that person shared testimony in their church today? Wait, what testimony? Okay. And they start going to places. And carrying your pictures about just wickedness of the devil. That's why he says when you fast and pray, you destroy such wickedness and such forces. There are those who have gone somewhere to tie down your destiny in one area or the other. They say, no problem. He will just be walking or he won't see anything. 
And then you just be struggling and walking and walking and you can't have you you one one devote has just come. Clear up whatever you have stuck. And it has been that sack. Wickedness of the devil. That's why you fast and pray. And all those through those 21 days, such yoke have been destroyed already. I didn't hear your loud amen. There are unknown forces that have gathered against you. You don't know them. They look strong in might. Such kinds of battle are not yours. It belongs to God. He said, hold your peace and I will fight for you. Hold your peace and I will fight for you. When the children of Israel saw the forces of the Egyptians pursuing them, the chariots, when they saw them from afar, they told Moses, you are a wicked man. You will have allowed us to die in Egypt. At least we will know we have graves there. Before we left, we have gone to choose, every one of us have gone to choose the location of our grave. You say, let's go, let's go. See what? See these people now. Wicked man. Where are we going now? Look at the rest there. The way they harassed Moses, Moses himself, I think along the way, the thing was too much for him. He went back to God. He said, oh God, oh God, oh God. See the rest here. See everybody, the people are complaining. Everything is on me. God said, Moses. Moses he. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe Moses was an Isoko man. <laughs> Why Christ unto me? Tell the people to go forward. Have they taken step and they didn't see me in action? The battle is not yours, it's mine. Your own is just to take step. Praise the name of the Lord. And then God took over that battle took over that battle. Only for the children of Israel to just be seeing the destruction of the Egyptians. You say God is a humorous God. He allowed them to jump into, they thought they saw dry land. So they walked inside. At the middle of the sea where you can't go forward, you can't go backward. At the middle. You say, let me quickly go back. At the middle, everything collapsed. Every enemy of your destiny you will look for them and you won't see any one of them again. When God takes over your battle, it is as good as one. That's what fasting does. He transfers the battle to God. He transfers the battle to God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when the children of Israel fasted, Jehovah, Jehoshaphat saw the, the war that this one is more than us. Let me transfer, let's transfer this battle. Went to God, proclaimed a fast, and all of them fasted. Transferred the battle to God. He took over. Took over. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't let, you see, don't, don't wait until you have challenges before you pray and fast. Don't wait. That's the problem. You know, Christians make the mistake most Christians make. You wait until there is challenge. And they now ask you, so what have you done about it now? He said, I've been praying. Ah, my sister, you need to fast too. But don't, don't, don't wait until you have challenges. You can have advanced victory. That's why every Wednesday we have congregational fasting. Some people now, since the 21 days has finished now, for him he has done all the, all the fasting for the year. So this last Wednesday he said, ah, Pastor, we just finished your work. Praise the name of the Lord. Every Wednesday. You, you, you are already swimming in advanced victory. It's just like the plants we call cactus. Thick, back, always green all through the year. What it does is that during the rainy season, it stores water. So during the dry season, you never see it without a way fresh. It has stored water inside. When you live a fasted life, you are building up supernatural strength. What breaks people down does not touch you. And people will start wondering what is happening. You are in the same place, exposed to the same condition, but not the same situation. Because your inner man is already strengthened and satisfied, you know, saturated with God. So you are unmovable. Nothing shakes you. 
Praise the name of the Lord. So fasting transfers our battle to God. When they fasted, God intervened. And then God set the people against themselves and started killing themselves. And the children of Israel started watching. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 22 to 24. Hallelujah. Number two, fasting enhances our access to divine guidance. It enhances our access to divine guidance. When God is guiding you, you will never, never run into any loss in life. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 11. He said, And the Lord shall guide thee continually. The Lord shall guide thee continually. He shall guide thee continually. He shall guide thee continually. Continuous guidance. When God is guiding you, you are satisfied with every good thing in life. Praise the name of the Lord. You are satisfied with every good thing in life. God never leads people backward. He leads people forward. He leads people forward. He leads people forward. When God leads you, you end up in greatness in the high places of the earth. You end up in greatness. Allow God to lead you. That's what fasting does. It gives God opportunity to lead you. When God leads you, your enemies are far from you. They stay far from you. The leading of God takes you to the high places of the earth. The leading of God takes you to the high places of the earth. In Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17, he said, Thus hears the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord of God which cheated thee to profit, which leaded thee by the way that thou shouldest go. When God leads you, you live a profitable life. I teach you on how to profit. Businessmen, God, let God lead you. There are businesses that you don't venture into at a particular time of the year. God can lead you to where you can get what you want cheaper. God can lead you to the places they need what you have so that you will not be struggling and struggling and struggling around begging those who do not need your service. Let God lead you. He's the one that leads to profiting in life. And verse 21, he said, when God leads you, you will never suffer thirst. And they thirst not when he led them through the desert, even though it was in the desert, but they didn't thirst. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock abundance. He cleaved the rock also and the waters gushed out, gushed out, rushed out abundance. When God leads you, he leads you to the place of abundance. Hallelujah. Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me, he maketh me to lie down, he gives me rest. When God is leading you, you are at rest. You are at rest. That's one proof of the leading of God. You have peace, peace of mind. Somebody has brought a business proposal to you. It looks so good, a proposal. But each time you want to make an investment, you want to process some payment, there is fear in your heart. There is fear. Watch it. Watch it. You are disturbed, you are troubled. You are disturbed, you are troubled. You want to make somebody a, a business partner and uh, you have already an MOU that to sign. Simple, understandable. But each time you take it, you take your pen, you want to sign. There is a check in your spirit, man. Watch it. When God is leading you, there is peace. There is rest. There is peace. There is rest. And you have God's voice in your heritage as a child of God. Just like every child of a man is entitled to the voice or the tongue of that man. In the same way, every child of God is entitled to the voice of God. 
to the voice of God. In John chapter 10 and verses 1 to 5, he said, He that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbed up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But you are a child of God, you have entered into the kingdom properly. But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the porter opened it, and the sheep hear his voice, and he called his own sheep by name and leaded them out. You hear his voice. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth forth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of stranger. When you are a bona fide child of God, you will know the voice of God. And he's, he, you know, he will speak to you. It is God's commitment to lead us. Just like it is your responsibility to show and guide your children into ways of profiting in life. By redemption, we have become members of the household of God. We are therefore entitled to know his voice. To know his voice because we are sheep under his shepherd. Praise the name of the Lord. And when God leads you, you end up in the high places of the earth. It is the voice of God that destroys the noise from the pit of hell. When you hear God's voice, the devil's voice, noise will be silenced. Praise the name of the Lord. And those who hear God, and hear from God, they don't fear men. When you hear God, <laughs> you are too, you know, fortified in the heart. It is the voice of God that makes you a voice on the earth. That's why we need divine leading. When God leads you, you become an authority and a force in whatever area of life you are in. Those who listen to him, to his voice, they are always at the forefront in life. When God speaks, the peak becomes your de destination in life. So we need divine guidance. When God is guiding you, you will never, never suffer stagnation in life. My prayer is that all through this year, you will not miss divine guidance in the name of Jesus. And number three, it engenders divine health. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 8. Your light is breaking forth. And then your health is recovering speedily. 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 So, times where it looks as if you are beginning to feel some certain thing in your body. You want to fight against any issue. You wedge it with fasting. You wedge it with fasting to destroy either on somebody's behalf or yourself. This reproach must cease in my life. Fasting makes your head to break forth speedily. Praise the name of the Lord. Number four, it secures posterity. It secures posterity. When you fast and pray, you are not just doing it for yourself. You are doing it for the generations to come. When you are fasting and praying for the kingdom, the blessing, the reward goes beyond you to your generations unborn. In Psalm 22 and verse 30, Psalm 22 and verse 30, he said, A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. Your seed, your service today, generations after you are getting blessed from it. So that's why you must take serving God seriously. Don't do it, you know, nonchalantly. No. Do it with your heart. Don't wait until somebody tells you, Well done. It is God's well done that you need. Most. Do it as unto the Lord. Because man is not your rewarder. It is God that is your rewarder. And he rewards you beyond your widest imagination. Secures prosperity. Posterity. Our fasting and prayer secures posterity. Number five. It empowers fulfillment of prophecy. Whatever God has declared concerning you, God is watching to effect it. He said, as rain comes from, you know, heavens and water the earth and makes the earth to board, bringing forth fruit. 
to the eater and seed to the sower. So is every word that have gone out of my mouth. Isaiah 55. He shall not return unto me void, but he shall accomplish that which he sent to do. So God watches to bring his word to pass. Isaiah 55 verses 10 to 11. He watches to bring his word to pass. He watches to bring his words to pass. Whatever has gone out of the mouth of the Lord, his hands surely will accomplish it. Whatever God says with his mouth, he watches to do it with his hands. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 15. Praise the name of the Lord. So every word that God has spoken, God ensures it comes to pass. In Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that he should repent. Has he said anything? Will he not do it? Has he spoken? Will he not make it good? No. When God says it, it's as good as done. He has magnified his word even above his name. Psalm 138 and verse 2. He says, not a jot of my word will go unfulfilled. So every word of prophecy for God for your life this year, it will find fulfillment in the name of Jesus. So when we fast, we enforce it. We enforce it against the opposition of the devil. We wait away the opposition to enforce it. To enforce it. In Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21, this kind goeth not except by prayer and fasting. So you put the devil away. You stop the opposition so as to enforce whatever God has spoken. Praise the name of the Lord. God has declared concerning us this year that we enjoy strange dimensions of favor. Open doors in diverse areas of our lives. This year, you will not struggle for any good thing. I thought I'm praying for somebody here. I thought somebody is receiving that prophecy. You will not struggle. You will not struggle. You know there are some people, they, they, there is an evil pattern concerning their destiny. A door is open. Everybody is having it easy. Everybody, when it comes to their turn, it shuts. They are promoting people. They are promoting people. When it comes to their turn, a new policy. People are enjoying certain favor. When it comes to their turn, they overrule it. But I prophesy to you by the power of God, every door that God will open in your life this year, no devil will shut it in the name of Jesus. God has declared that he's about to open a great door for you. In 1 Corinthians 16, 9, a great and effectual door is open. It's open. It's open. It's open. What? ever testimony you couldn't share in the last 15 years between now and the next 6 months God will cause you to share it in the name of Jesus that door that you have struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled struggled to enter that door of job you have written all manners of applications here and there some places it's as good as if you have gotten the job but nothing came forth in that area I speak by the power of God you are going to be having problem choosing the job you want in the name of Jesus. Get set for open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Things that you have struggled. Since you have struggled. You have struggled. You have struggled for. That visa you have struggled and struggled for. Just relax. This year is going to be without struggle in the name of Jesus. Open doors. In Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 45, sorry, and verse 1 beginning. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 1 beginning. Thus he has a law to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand have hold him, to subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings to open before you the two leaf gates and the gates shall not be shut. When God wants to open a door, he can use any man to open it for you. You are not permitted to follow men. God can open the door using any man and with dignity they will beg you. Praise the name of the Lord, they will beg you. This one you are running and running and running and running after man. 
at the expense of God. You need a job. And then they are giving you appointments. Even on Sunday. They say, we tell you, okay, meet me, meet me, meet me. Okay, meet me, meet me in the house. I don't know when I will wake up, but just make sure by 7 a.m. you are happy. Anytime I wake up, I will see you. Sunday morning. And you are there seated. The man is sleeping. All through service is going on, you sat down there. In the process of sitting down there, you two start sleeping. Only for him to wake up around 2, 2 p.m. To come out from the house, 2 p.m. Because you need a job. So you tell God, oh God, I don't need to hear you now. I have an appointment with man. That's how some people run after men so much that they forget that it is only the door God opens that can open. Run after God and God will cause men to favor you. Not vice versa. I have said before you an open door. Isaiah 45. Two leave doors. Two leave gates. Two leave gates. That's what he says in verse 1. Two leave gates. Not just ordinary door. Wide door. Wide door. If you are entering with a small car, you open one gate. Is that not so? But if a trailer is to enter your compound, what do you do? So can you imagine the volume of blessing that God has for you this year? Two leave gates. He said, I know that the devil will want to stop it because whenever a great door is about to open, adversaries are there. Look at what he said in verse 2. He said, I will go before you. And do what? And make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, will call thee by thy name. I am the God of Israel. Listen to me very carefully. Whatever used to be your income for the year, it will be your tithe for a month this year. <laughs> Two live gates. That's what God is about to do. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what God is about to do in your life. No door can ever be shut against a child of God when you carry God's presence. God's presence is the greatest key to a life of unstoppable open doors. God's presence. When God is going with you, the gate must be lifted. In Psalm 24, verses 7 to 10, lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Even leave them up here, everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. I say, who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. When God is walking with you, the enemies must bow. The gates are automatically lifted and open. Praise the name of the Lord. Anywhere God steps in, Satan must step out. In Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 30, you know the story of Paul and Silas. At midnight, the Bible says, Paul and Silas, when they sang praises, the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prisons were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's bounds were loose. The, the, the prison was shaken. Why? Because as they began to sing praise, God himself came in in person. As he stepped into that prison, everywhere must shake. Everywhere I shook. The presence of God shakes away all the enemies of your life. When you carry God, no Satan can stop you. The doors must open. No matter who gather themselves against you, they must open the door. Anyone sitting over your destiny right now, I command them to be pushed away in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 114, verses 1 to 9, when Judah was ahead of them, going ahead of them, everything opened up. Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language. The Bible says Judah 
was his sanctuary and Israel is dominion. And the sea saw it. They fled. Jordan was breaking back. The mountains keep like rams and the little hills like lamb. What a D. O thou sea that thou fled as thou Jordan that thou was driven back. Ye mountain, why are you skipping like the rams and little hills like the lambs? Tremble that. Who will not tremble at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob? The presence of God. Every obstacle trembles at the presence of God. Trembles at the presence of God. Everyone, every witch wizard, every wicked forces that have said that you will not succeed in life, I command God, the God, the man of war, to fight them in the name of Jesus. The presence of God opens up every door concerning your destiny. Opens up every door concerning your destiny. Opens up every door concerning your destiny. What are the keys? Number one, prayer. In Acts chapter 12, in Acts chapter 12, Peter was held in prison. And then the Bible said the disciples were praying for him. They were praying for him. And then as they were praying, the prison doors opened. And then here was Peter. He came to meet them where they are praying. In fact, so fast, so fast, that they never thought it could be real. As a child of God, therefore, live a prayerful life. Don't live a careless life. Live a prayerful life. Let your prayer life be on fire. Let your prayer life be on fire. Don't play with your destiny. It is only on a cold object that a fly can perch and stay. Not on a hot stove. The reason why the enemy come close to you and even touch you is because you are cold. Be on fire. Let your prayer life be on fire. Let your prayer life be on fire. Don't play with your prayer life. Don't play with all the prayer platform in the church. Any opportunity to pray, be there. Be there. Many believers run for prayers. And very easy. Announce love feast, the whole place will be filled. Prayer meetings. They will push their children to go and pray. And some men will push their wife. Honey, just write all our, you know all our prayer points already. Just go. That's why you have more women in prayer meeting than men. They just, you know, the Bible says the two shall become one. Take your prayer life seriously. They were praying for Peter. And then at that material time, the door was open. Open. Take your prayer life seriously. All the prayer path platform. Covenant hour prayer. Some people, do you know that all through last year, some people didn't attend covenant hour prayer, not even once. Not he doesn't believe in it, not even once. How sweet is it for you to start your day charged? Charged, you wait off all evil. Even Jesus said it all. Every day has his own temptation. That's why you must pray. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. There are some people that just enter into some evil carelessly, innocently, innocently. They just carry themselves into where there is trouble because they are, you know, they are not spiritually sensitive. Some people have made some, some trips like that that God is not there with calamity. Some wicked forces are going to approach you that day. If you're on fire, they can't come near you. That's why you must start your day well every day. All the prayer platform is there. Your home self fellowship where you pray together, be there. Be there. Be there. Wednesday fasting and prayer, be there. 
How can you a whole adult? You can't fast. All your children in primary secondary school, the primary school, they are fasting. Our children here, they fast. They fast. And when you come and see them pray, they do weak or spiritual emphasis. I come here to pray for them. You see them praying with vigor. Small children, they are praying with vigor. Praying, praying, and praying. And here you see adults. Because you are fasting, even to open your mouth is a problem. You come as if they are beating you. They say, everybody shall we rise up and thank God. Pastor, I beg. I no go stand up. Huh? Anything we want to do, come do. I no go stand up. I don't stand up two times now. Now here I go do all my prayer. Lord, thank you. I don't tire. The one way I don't pray. Summarize I'm God. Twelve o'clock. See you with a big bottle of coke. Or rubber. Take your prayer life serious this year. That's one key to a life of continuous breakthrough. When you are on fire, you see, when, when you get to a point of challenge because you have already paid the price, the door just opens. That's not when to start praying. A soldier does not prepare on the war front. No, he's already set. Praise the name of the Lord. You are looking for a job. You have been praying. Active, your spiritual life is hot. Suddenly, somebody just called you and said, ah, it's like uh, there's one interview going on there or another. You are not prepared, nothing. You just got there immediately you, because there is inner strength inside. They just see you, ask you one question. Supernatural answer comes in. They look at you and say, ah, I think this, this person is better. He didn't apply, but this is the one we need. All those things, it's not just by chance. No. Take your prayer life seriously. Number two, be engaged in kingdom service. Be engaged in kingdom service. Be engaged in kingdom service. Exodus chapter 23, verses 25 to 26. They shall serve the Lord your God. You shall bless your bread and your water. It will take away sickness from the midst of thee. There shall be nothing cast their young, nor be burning their land. The numbers of your days I will fulfill all the blessing and open doors to whoever need is inside this. He will bless your bread and your water. That's your career. That's your job. Whatever you do in life that put bread on your table, he leaves it prospering. Favors, blessings on every side because you are involved. In 2 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 15, when they made a covenant to seek after God, he gave them all round rest. Rest on every side. All round rest on every side. Rest. Rest. In Job chapter 36 and verse 11. Job 36 and verse 11. If they obey and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they obey and serve me. If they obey and serve me. If they obey and serve me. Get entrenched in kingdom service. Let the things that is in the heart of God be driving you. Get entrenched in kingdom service. Be involved in kingdom service. Don't be a bench warmer. Swing testimony here, people sharing it here is tied down to service. There are people who go on outreach every day of the week. Every day. They are there on the field. They have invested if it's one hour, one hour, 15 minutes. They have calculated it for God. Just for Jesus. There are people who rent buses and bring people inside to come to church. So there are people that use their car to bring people. You must be engaged in doing something for Jesus. He has blessed you so much. You can't afford to just sit down and be wasting away. Hallelujah. Kingdom service keeps the door open. Doors of blessing. Doors of blessing. You are using your finances for God. Why will he not open greater doors for financial breakthrough? But the last one, God bless you. you that's how you, 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 your hand is super glue. Aka gum. You won't help anybody. You won't give to God. You won't give to man. Even your family is a, is a war. It's war. They will be praying prayer all night for you to release money. All the children will gather in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, touch daddy to release that money. To give us money. In the name of Jesus. The blood, the blood, the blood. And they will write your name on paper and be sprinkling the blood. Praise that name. That's not you. Serve God with your resources. Serve God with your position. Anything God gives you and it has no kingdom included there, it can't last. In 
in Luke chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible talks about Zachariah and Elizabeth. They were serving God, and then the womb opened. Barrenness destroyed. That's how barrenness in every other area of life is destroyed when you are actively serving God. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, carry divine presence. Carry divine presence. We have talked about that. God's divine presence is the greatest key. Romans 8 31. If God be for you, who can be against you? Psalm 114, verses 1 to 9. When God is going ahead of you, the doors must open. Run away from anything that will steal God's presence from you. Any friend who is an enemy of God, leave that person. He's not a friend. Anyone that mocks your Christianity, anyone that mocks what you know is valuable to you, that's not a friend. That's not a friend. Where you they come from is church. You and this church. Now, wow. You never tell us hey, you want to become pastor. See your Bible. This one, a Bible. We carry your Bible. You see this one. Waiting with that one, anointing your head. Wow. We don't become a valley soon. He must everything about God in your life. And you see, call that person friend. He will soon take you completely away. He will soon take you to Habali's place. And even carry you inside one court. He said, Pastor, you don't understand. We, we grew up together like this. We're on the same street. In fact, we, are, we used to be we are friends like this. Like this. Like this. Just open your eyes and see him carry you to hell. God forbid. Take your stand. Anything that wants to rob you of divine presence, run away from it. Praise the name of the Lord. God's presence in your life is your ultimate to a life of continuous open doors. And number four, live a life of praise. A life of praise. A life of praise. A life of praise. A life of praise keeps the door ever open in your life. Psalm 22 and verse 3, he said, he habits the praises of people. His people, God dwells in the midst of praises. He dwells in the midst of praises. Praise the name of the Lord. Live a praiseful life. Don't let God catch you grumbling. No. Those who murmur, they are destroyed. Those who grumble, they become grounded. Those who are offended in God, they lose their defense. Be excited. It is only those who are excited that can excel in life. It is your face that determines your face in life. Your F-A-C-E determines your P-H-A-S-E. You see some people's face as if you just know they are fighting everybody, they are fighting God. They never smile. You see everybody shout amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and smile and say God is good unto me. They look at you and say God is good what is the problem? Smile. Let me face your neighbor and say, smile, neighbor. Smile. Is your neighbor smiling? Tell him, smile. The world is not falling on you. Smile. Praise the name of the Lord. Smile. Smile. These are some things that will not make people enter into their blessing. Little, little things. You are praying and fasting and praying and fasting for husband. Praying and fasting and fasting for, 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 for wife. Suddenly a man saw you from the distance. He has been eyeing you from. So I'm praying and praying. Well, the first day he comes to you face to face. And then he looks at you. Your, your face is scary. As a lady, you put in one face. You say, you are blessed. He can't even calculate himself again. He begins to miss words together. Present tense with past tense. How was you today? Because your face is terrifying. Then you say, yes, yes. What is it? What, uh, sorry, uh, please, is this the way to the bookshop? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Live a life of praise. When you live a life of praise, you command his presence. And his presence opens the door all the way. Who can stand him? Paul and Silas were in the prison. They had every reason to be grumbling and murmuring. But they were in the prison. They prayed and it looks as if nothing is happening. They switched to praises. 
with their chains in their hands, with their chains on their legs, they turned it to an instrument of praise. And they began to praise God. And the doors opened. God didn't send an angel. He came himself and opened the gates. Look at all the barricaded gates with iron gates. Opened it instantly. That's what praise does. It opens every closed door. Live your life in praises. Learn to praise God. You wake up. The first thing that should come out from your mouth, Father, I thank you. Today is a good day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Learn to praise God. Words of praise. Learn to worship God. Learn to say good things about God. Just be excited. Some people are captured by their words. Know any words of adoration to God. Know any words of thanksgiving to God. Today is the last Sunday now. They say, everybody, let's lift up our hand. Thank God. He doesn't see one thing to thank God on. Say, thank God for what? And God is watching. Live a life of praises. And then, God will keep opening the doors for you. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. That door of miracle job be open to you in the name of Jesus. That door, that door of financial breakthrough be open unto you in the name of Jesus. That door of marital breakthrough be open to you now in the name of Jesus. That door of international connection in your business, in your career be open unto you now in the name of Jesus. That door of sound health be open to you in the name of Jesus. Now I decree every negative door that the devil has opened. Now it is shut in the name of Jesus. That door of death in your family is shut in the name of Jesus. That door of sickness is shut in the name of Jesus. That door of stagnation is shut in the name of Jesus. That door of losses is shut in the name of Jesus. Every hanging blessing over you, over your family, is hereby released in the name of Jesus. Whatever you could not achieve in the last 15 years, you will achieve it this year in the name of Jesus. God will open one door to you that will make you forget the struggles of 20 years in the name of Jesus. Whatever door that you want open, it is hereby open in the name of Jesus. It is open in the name of Jesus. And I declare that the kind of testimony you have not shared before, you will share it this coming month in the name of Jesus. Go in peace. This week is blessed for you. There shall be no evil for you this week. Harvest of testimonies in the name of Jesus. Doors will open on their own accord and swiftly for you this week. In the name of Jesus, go in peace. The God of Bishop Edward goes with you. Return with your testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then, expect turn around to become your new identity from henceforth. And let the church shout, Amen and Amen. God bless you.